Hey guys, today we're going to convert a Drukari Archon from the Nunari Visarch model. Part 1, we've got to start somewhere, don't we? And I always just start with opening up the box and checking out the sprues, checking out the models and having a look, having a look at the parts and see what we can do with it. We're going to be using most of the parts from the actual Visarch model. Um, he's such an awesome model, there's there's not a real lot on here that we're going to scrap, but we are going to get rid of a few pieces just, just to make him look a little bit more Drakari, a little bit more Dark Eldar and less goody goody. So let's grab our tools and start clipping out the pieces. Now when I clip out these pieces from the sprue, I always leave a little knob here like this. I don't, I don't clip it right hard up against the, the piece because sometimes the clippers can do a little bit of damage so just pull it back about half a mil from the from the piece when you clip it out and we'll go back later on and clean it up with a scalpel. Right, let's get some inspiration. Uh, I watched Thor the movie just before making this and this is the bad fella in Thor and straight away it just resonated with me. Um, as well as this fella, the the classic Archon model, who's just so awesome, such an awesome model. He's way better than the current Archon model. So I want to try and uh, kind of base base this Archon that we're going to work on off this fella. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make that helmet. We're gonna make that soul trap, the bone sword. And as you can see, he's he's quite similar to the Visage in his pose and his armor, just the whole style, so it's probably going to work really well, I reckon. So we do need to swap his sword, and we're going to pinch this pretty lady's sword. We're going to take her sword, because it's it looks a lot more Drukari, it's that kind of husk blade type thing. Now we've got, we've ac I've actually got that helmet from the, from the classic Archon. Uh, but I really want to try and recreate it um, using the Visarch helmet. But we'll get back to that later. First we're going to just clean up the models. We've got to clean up all the mold lines. Um, and this is just this is just um, a bit of a job to get, to get done. I like to just do it all at once and get it out of the way and then we don't have to think about it anymore. So we scrape off the, these little knobs here that we've left after clipping it just like so, and that way we, we can make sure that we've got control over um, how smooth that is and, and the clippers aren't going to do any damage. Just snip it off half a mil away from the model and then we can go and clean it up like this with a scalpel. We'll go around the whole model and get all those little mold lines. All right, part two, let's, let's make this helmet. Let's turn this Visage helmet into this classic Argon helmet. First up, we've got to chop off his little spike, which is unfortunate because I think his spike looks bad to the bone. I think it looks awesome, but we'll just chop it off anyway. Now we can use the scalpel to clean up, clean up those little spikes, the, the little spikes around the helmet, and try and bring the helmet to a bit of a, a clean point, just like most of the other Dark Eldar helmets. And we need to scrape off this swirly stuff on the front of the helmet because we're going to we're going to sculpt a face on that on this helmet. So we're going to clean up all the all of the, the cool detail on the front of the helmet. Unfortunately we're just chopping it off and smoothing it down, making a bit of a blank uh, a blank canvas for some sculpting. These are skulls from that giant skulls box with a billion skulls in it. These skulls are corn demons and all I want from that is these horns. I kind of raided my bits box and looked for pieces that had similar horns to the classic Archon model and these are the ones that I decided to use. Kind of again influenced by Thor, uh, sort of like going for a bit of Loki's helmet sort of style but obviously still like this helmet. So we just need to 
start chopping them down and shaping them and seeing how how they're going to fit on the actual helmet you know i like to use a bit of blue tack when um when when trying to locate where to put the piece and seeing how it's going to fit just like this little little blow of blue tack on the helmet and it just helps us to visualize the model and see how it's looking without having to get our big fingers in the way and we can assess what we need to do how how much we need to clip off like this so that it fits also holding the two horns together like so um, allows us to try and maintain that um, symmetry make sure they're kind of symmetrical as much as possible we don't want one horn to just be shorter than the other because it's just going to look dodgy want to try and make it as perfect as possible it's, it's very difficult and it's a lot of back and forth like so we're just testing it testing the fit and then going back to our knife and shaving a bit more down and back and forth making it making it look right and we're getting there I think that's looking about that's looking about right it's a little bit lopsided but that's only blue tacked on um, we'll come back to that in a minute first we want to just chop off these ears and get them out of the way and we want to keep those ears so don't lose them make sure we put them in a little pile on the side of our desk I usually put some something like that on a blob of blue tack so it's not going to blow away um, if you've got the fan going or something it might blow it off the desk so anyway let's now that those ears are out of the way we can glue glue these horns onto the helmet uh, just one at a time as well just a little blob of glue on the helmet itself and then um, we can we can position the horn and move it around if we need to and then put the second one and try and match the second one to that first one as best as we can And we can we can just tweak it a little bit before the glue dries, but you don't want to be moving it around too much because it's going to make the it's going to make a really weak joint if we if we if we fiddle with it too much. But anyway, once we've got it right, we can let it dry, and when it's fully dry, we can begin shaving it down a little bit so we can try and make it a bit more flat against the helmet. Just shave it take off a little piece at a time if you try and chop too much it might put too much pressure on the on the horns and it might snap off get out the old ratty bag of milliput uh, mix up a little bit and we're going to begin sculpting a face now I usually put a little bit on my thumb like that so it's easy access I can get to it I can get a little bit here and there if I need to I've sped up the footage here just so I can show you the basically the entire process of sculpting this without cutting it too much and um, you can just see that see the um, start to end of it what we got to do is really basically rough out a face so you kind of poke around in this putty poke around some eye sockets and an, a bit of a, n a nose and an eyebrow just some really kind of landmark shapes of the face and it's going to look ugly for a while and that's fine that's how that's how we sculpt we just we just gradually refine you're pushing a little bit of putty around you're scraping a bit off putting some on again and again just until until it starts looking right and then it's just all about refining it refining a little bit at a time and we definitely don't want to be sculpting detail at the start of any kind of sculpture always when you're sculpting something you have to you have to just get the basic landmarks the basic shape of of what you of what you're sculpting be it a face or hand or a piece of armor because as soon as you start sculpting detail and then you realize that it's a little bit lopsided or the um the nose is not centered or something like that then all of the sculpting that you just did gets wasted you might have spent an hour sculpting a beautiful eye or something and then you find that the the eye is not symmetrical and you've got to redo it so it's just always always good to just leave the detail 
here I'm, I'm starting to do a little bit of detail but it's not too much detail I'm just I'm just mapping out where the eyes are I'm not going to be sculpting eyelids or anything just yet um, I'm switching between a few tools here this one is called a color shaper it's pretty much a, um, a paintbrush but instead of uh, bristles it's got like a little rubber a little rubber point and it's a really nice tool for sculpting with um, for creating smooth surfaces I'm using it here to to flatten out the eyebrows and the forehead um, a scalpel this is one of my most common sculpting tools for detail things like eyes pretty much the, the finest detail I ever use or I ever sculpt I use a scalpel to to, to um, get that job done like right now we're sculpting a bit of eyelid sort of shape underneath the eye and all we're doing is just pulling up a little bit of putty from underneath the eyeball sort of pushing it upwards into the eye and it kind of overlaps the eye a little bit that's how we make eyelids just keep checking it against that original helmet we're not trying to copy that helmet in this with this face this face we're kind of basing it off those little faces on the Yanari model um, that sort of you know the ones that uh, kind of attached to his belt and um, on his armor that that sort of design that's what we're, we're sort of basing this this off kind of so it's it's based off the classic Archon model but it's the new design with the new armor normally when I'm sculpting something as detailed as this I like to use um, Sculpey Sculpey firm or beads putty or something like that but we can't use that um, for this because that kind of um, clay needs to be baked in the oven um, and you can't bake that when it's when it's on a piece of plastic because the plastic will just melt so we have to use some kind of epoxy putty so that's why we're using milli putt for this and for now this is the finished face that's going to be good enough for now I reckon Let's get those ears that we've got sitting on the side of our desk. Here they are, they're very small. We pick them up with a, a paintbrush that we've just dipped in some water. And then we can glue them to the side of the helmet. Just add a little bit of glue to the side of the temple there. And um, just lightly place the ear and poke it around with the paintbrush so that we can position it the way we want try and get them as symmetrical as possible once they're dry we can add a little bit more milli putt and we're going to sculpt the side of the helmet here so it looks like he's wearing a bit of a mask so that we can paint the front of the helmet gold and the back of the helmet can be black or something it's also just sharpening up the the detail around the ears and um, making some sort of sharp cheekbones I just want to close up this this slit in his helmet um, just to make it a little bit more like the classic the classic helmet so we just fill it and then using our scalpel just cut a new slit that's just a, a thin fine one once it's dry sand it sand him down and then the helmet will be all finished after all that halfway through painting I decided I don't like that helmet anymore I don't want to use it so just getting this basic helmet from the Raider kit or whatever that flying pirate ship thing is called just a basic bare head and I'm, all I'm doing is just chopping out this back bit here just to make it fit onto the neck and I maintain my decision. I'm, I'm glad that I did this um, in the finished model. It turned out really good, I think. Part three, his right arm. We need to cut his arm, change the position. So very carefully, using a lighter, we're going to heat up the blade. And this is going to make it really easy to cut, to make a cut through this arm. You just press it through and it will melt. It'll cut through like butter. So we just need to cut this arm off at the joint here. 
And when I'm doing something like this, I like to kind of just make small cuts around the whole arm so I can control where it's going to where it's going to cut and then I can just snap it like this. So we need to make the arm go from that to that. So we just have to get our scalpel and we're going to have to chop this bit on this kind of angle. So once we've chopped that bit, we can see how the arm is going to sit now. And we'll just, just chop off this little bit here, this little dodgy bit. And we're making the arm like this so that we can we can make him holding that soul trap that the, that the classic Archon is, is holding. So if your Citadel glue is anything like mine, nothing comes out and then all of a sudden it just pours out. So if that happens with you, I just grab a, a paper towel and just let it let the corner of it touch that giant pile of um, glue and let the let the tea towel let the paper towel just drink up that glue. Don't try and dab it off or, or you're just going to smear it everywhere. Just let it sort of soak into the towel. And here we go. Here's the arm. It's just slightly altered. Now we need to sculpt in that missing information and fix up any kind of damage that we did by chopping that arm off. And we, we possibly did do a bit of damage because, you know, it's a pretty drastic operation. I mean, he's got his arm amputated and glued back together. So we've got to do a bit of stitching up. We've got to fix him up a little bit. Um, and it's quite easy to do, really. You just stick some putty in there and kind of match it up to the line. So we've got a bit of a soul stone happening there. Um, and we've got we've got this bit here, which is his his elbow pad. And we just, just match it up to the existing elbow pad. Um, that's all there is to it. Just try and make sure it's as smooth as possible when it joins up to the plastic. Part four, the body. First thing we're going to do with the body is chop off these soul stones on his breastplate. There are soul stones all over this model and I just don't want that many on there. I want to make this breastplate look a little bit more like the, the classic Archon, which is just more simple. And um, we're just going to make make that look dark, make that just look like armor. The soul stone here on his little belt thing, we're going to chop that off as well, make it nice and smooth. And with these bits, we're just going to file them down or we'll scrape them down with our blade just to get them to a sharp point in the middle. So it's like a left side and a right side of each breastplate, just so we can get that sharpness like so, you know, you know like what you see on a lot of other dark Eldar models. We'll just quickly glue the the leg together for this piece and we're going to we're going to build up this subsection. We're going to glue all those pieces together and then we can continue modifying it. So we can we can glue this this section of the body on to the legs and then we can glue this top section to the torso. We want to make this this cloth no longer cloth. We don't want it to be nice and clean and neat. We want to make it we want to turn it into dead skin like on some of the dark Eldar models. So I'm just using a, a, a pen to draw where I'm going to make my cuts because I'm going to make it look like it's been stitched together. Once again heating up that blade very carefully so that you don't burn yourself. We can easily score a line through this um, this cloth. Once we've once we've cut that line, we can clean it up just by scraping out away some of the the plastic that kind of melted and seeped out. Just cleaning it up a little bit and smoothing it down. Again, we'll heat up a sculpting tool, and we can use this to poke some little holes here and there. And this gets a really cool effect like you know if you look at some of the other the other dead skin on um, on some of the other dark Eldar models 
they've got little holes and things like that just to make it look like it's rotting and everything and you can you could drill them out as well but this is just an, an alternative way and you can you can also get some interesting effects because it's, it's creating a little bit of a melting effect we want to do the same thing to cut up some soul stones and very carefully we just want to make sure we don't melt the soul stones too much we, we all we want to do is just put a few little cracks into some of them so that it looks like those soul stones have been broken and stolen they're not these aren't like happy soul stones that he's just walking around carrying happy little eldar souls uh the he's done bad things to get these souls so we want to try and put some of that story into the model it's important it's an important thing for dark elder they don't walk around with soul stones intact they they like break them and stuff so going to just roll up some more melee putt and put it over this part of the the belt here and we're just going to sculpt it to look like it's the, it's the top of that that dead skin cloth rag thing and it's just kind of folding up over and tucking in like a sash well it is a sash anyway um, it's just that it had that soul stone there we wanted to get rid of that the classic archon model has this same kind of thing so that's why we're doing this using a paintbrush is actually one of the best sculpting tools you can you can mix a bit of water with it and um, you can use it to to smooth the surface down well we've got them the sculpting putty out the milli putt this is this is how I fill up my my gaps from when two pieces of plastic are glued together. All you do is mix a bunch of water with the milli putt and turn it into a bit of a paste, and then you just put it on there and use your paintbrush like this to paint over it, and you can smooth it and feather it out. And it's it's really easy. You don't even need to sand it afterwards. You can just you can just add a lot add, add more water until it just goes like this, and it's just dead smooth. And we'll do it to the other sections of the model as well such as the other side of the cloth and I think you can see a little bit here and there down the sides of the torso now let's sculpt some stitches this this will be a useful lesson for a lot of you because stitches are a pretty common thing on these games workshop models and I often find myself sculpting stitches because it adds a lot of character to things you know if you sculpt if you if you're working on an orc or something or a skaven dude or um you know even some night haunts whatever anything anything that might need stitches this will help you out so all you do is roll up a tiny sausage tiny little microscopic sausage put it on onto the model over the over the cracks that we've scored and then you just need to press down press down the, the ends of it just to sort of press it onto the plastic so that, so that it sticks and then all you do is just gradually refine it just use your sculpting tools to thin those stitches out make them as thin as you can uh, unless they're going on something like a, an orc or something and then they don't have to be that thin but generally I like to try to make them as thin as possible It's, um, it's, it's not so hard to do really um, just do one stitch at a time don't try and do a whole bunch at once one at a time and then once you've got them all done we can go back over them and just tweak them and sort of thin them out and this is how you thin them out you just kind of press down on each side and sort of scrape, scrape it outwards away from the stitch one other thing I will say is you don't actually need to sculpt holes you don't have to poke holes into the plastic or anything like that you can just kind of paint that um, you know or even even just like putting some null oil around it or something just to make it look a little bit darker so you don't have to sculpt holes so don't worry about that you can actually get away with doing this without even scoring those those cuts next we're going to chop off that boss pole from the Yanari because um, we want this fur coat we want this fur bit but we want to put this boss pole onto it which is from the the current Archon model so we just need to snip off that end bit and make any adjustments that we need uh, to make just so that it's the right the right height and everything and we can glue it on 
With the other boss pole, which is also from the current Archon model, we're going to use both of them. We just want to snip off this little tassel here. We just don't need it, don't want it on there. So what's well, one less thing to paint? So we'll just chop it off. Just don't think it needs it. So once we've just chopped that off, we can use our scalpel to clean up that spiky bit that um, was, it was hanging off. And it, and it actually glues perfectly into this hole. It's like the piece was made to fit in this hole. So once we, once we glue it in there, we want to just quickly move it around and make sure it's level and it's the same kind of angle as the other boss pole. But again, don't fiddle with it too much, otherwise the joint is going to be a bit weak. And notice the skulls on, on that boss pole. They, they get hidden behind the back, so later on when we're painting it, I actually chop those off. Just, just pointing that out. Right, part 6, sword. As I said, we're going to take this pretty lady's sword. Um, it, it looks much more like a, a husk blade. Um, then the Visarch's model, which is kind of like a power sword looking thing. So we just chop that out of the sprue and give it a quick cleanup. Actually, not a quick cleanup, give it a proper cleanup. Just scraping the sides of, of the blade, make sure any mold lines get removed, as well as this little bone bit here. We don't need to clean the, the hand or the hilt because we're not using that. We're going to chop the blade off off this lady's hand and we're going to put it onto the Archon's hand. So just chop around both sides, score both sides, and then we can just lightly bend it until it snaps off very gently, like so. In doing so, we can ensure that the blade is going to cut be cut off level. It's not going to be cut off on a big angle. And here we're doing the same thing to the the visage or the Archon's hand. So now we've got his hand and her sword and we're going to attach it like this. At this stage I only used um, plastic glue to glue the sword to the hand and that's a bit lazy and you'll see in the painting video it breaks off so this needs to be pinned. So I can I show you how to pin that in the painting video so make sure you check that out. Here I'm just checking the level making sure that the blade and the hilt are straight. We don't need this tassel again it's another thing to paint that we just it doesn't need to be on the model. So I chop that off and I'm chopping off these little Eldar looking bits. Just simplifying this blade I even considered at one point sanding down um, the, the, the grip so that it looks like it's bone, but decided not to. And this little canister, whatever it is, that's getting chopped off. Don't need that on there. We want to make this blade look simple, not, not all fancy like the Yanari blades. They're a bit too fancy for this Archon. So we chop that off and we give it a clean up. Scrape off the mold lines and smooth it down here. Here's the finished blade. And we can glue it to this subsection. Radio part 7, the soul trap. This is a fun thing to sculpt. We're just starting off with a blob of millipart. And we press that down onto a base and begin using our sculpting tools to shape it into a pyramid. And all we're doing is shaving off each of the four sides and kind of just pressing into a triangular shape, a pyramid shape. I'm just speeding up the footage here so you can just watch it sort of come to life. There yeah, I'm just checking, just checking the size of it with the hand. We want to make sure that we're not going to sculpt something and let it dry and find that it's just massively big or too small or something. So just keep checking, checking that it's the right size. So yeah, we're just, just shaving it down and pushing it. If you push it from the base um, of the pyramid, it will start getting a bit taller. 
Um, I do that at one point. It's, it, it ends up looking a little bit fat and flat. So when we want to make it look a bit taller and skinnier, we can put pressure on the base of the pyramid, on the bottom of it, and push it inwards, and it will start to rise. I'm also leaving the, the offcuts. As you can see, I, I kind of let them scrape down the pyramid, and then they, I, let, I let them sit there on the base and stay there. That's good because that helps the pyramid to, to be stable. If those little bits, if I just chopped them off, the pyramid might slide around and move. One, one of those little bits obviously just fell off. That's okay, we've still got three of them and that's kind of stabilizing the pyramid and keeping it still. Keep checking it from all sides and making sure it looks symmetrical and it looks um, straight on, on all sides like this. You don't want it to be on an extreme angle on one side and then um, a low angle on the other side. Once it's dry, now we can peel off these bits because we want to start refining this and filing it. So we can pry off these little bits and get rid of them. And now that it's, it's dry and it's hard, we can really get some sharpness to this little pyramid using our, our scalpel and scraping it as well as this file. And the file just wonders because you just keep it on that same angle and just go back and forth and then it just makes it really dead straight. Just need to keep our eye on it, keep our eye on all sides and make sure we're not kind of taking off too much angle or not enough angle and just adjust. Alrighty, oh, here's the uh, finished pyramid. It's not actually all that perfect and um, all that straight, but it's good enough for what we need it for. Let's go and glue this this arm onto the subsection, onto the main body subsection. Now we're well, going to use some super glue. Put some of that into his palm, palm of his hand, and now we're just going to attach the soul trap um, into his hand. Once we're happy with the position of it, just leave it to dry for a little while and now we can begin sculpting fire or, f or flame or smoke or some kind of magic stuff. This time we're using something called procreate which is much more like green stuff. Um, if milliput is a little bit more like clay, like sculpt, Sculpey or something like that. Uh, Procreate is much more like green stuff. It's much more tacky and stretchy. Um, so you can see there, I just kind of grab it with my hand and pull it and stretch it. Um, if I was to do that with milliput, it would just snap the milliput because it's it's not flexible. It's not stretchy at all. Milliput is kind of um, powdery or, or it's much more like clay, so it'll just it's it's just going to snap if we try and pull that. And we want we want something that we can pull um, and twist and all that to create this fire. So we just put a few little bits and pieces onto it, a few little sausages and little rolled out bits, bits that start off looking like nothing, but we just sort of shape them and twist them and sculpt them into something that looks like a little flame. Got to press some into the the um, the underside of the sole trap, kind of fill fill that dodgy gap because we're going to fill that with white paint later. So we want to make sure that that white paint's going to translate um, nicely. So we we'll just push them in there and smooth it around. We want to make some some big flames and some little flames, like this this little flame here. I'm going to put this at the back. And we've got that little one at the front as well. And we kind of make that look like it's going into the soul trap and sort of going out the other side. We've got to remember that we're sculpting something that's not a solid here. We're sculpting fire, which it's, it's can be a little tricky. Um, you've got to, you got to picture that flame going kind of into the solid object. It's not going to, it's not going to hold much form 
around the object it's going to go into it and it's going to be flickering and going thin and that sort of thing so you can see we've got that little flame at the front and then this flame here kind of coming out the back of it almost like it's going through the object so yeah, there's really there's nothing to it we just just need to think about what we're doing just got to remember that we're sculpting fire and try and picture what you think the fire would do try and remember remember what it looks like when you're staring at the fireplace um, or just go online and get some reference pictures just look at some fire and look at how it works this is magic fire though so you know you can do what you want with it, it doesn't have to look exactly like real fire we want to get a bit of swirl like this don't want it to just be all straight we want to make sure it looks like it's kind of flickering maybe blowing in the wind because you got to remember his his cloak and his his um, dead skin cloth uh, um, hanging from his belt they're kind of blowing to the right so you got to keep that in mind when you're doing something like this to make going to make sure it's blowing the same way and staying consistent right over these last little bits here we're using our our fine sculpting tool and just sharpening them up and making them look good making it look their best here's the finished flame right oh part eight the base we're going to make uh an interesting base we're going to make a bit of a space scene we want to make it look like he the archon is standing inside a spaceship standing on the bridge um, looking down through some kind of glass floor and he's looking down into space and below he's going to see his armada his his fleet of battleships flying to war so we're creating a base in the same way as we did with that um, the space marine trapped in ice so we just chop the top of the base and then we make that become the bottom of the base so we're clipping off these little knobs here we don't need those and we then have to just file it nice and smooth because this is going to be the bottom of the base so we want it to sit flat this is what you'll see if you look at if you look underneath the base we also need to file this side down because this is the side that's going to be our canvas for our freehand um, we're going to paint a nice space scene on there later so it needs to be nice and smooth Next we're going to use some plastic glue and just smash a whole bunch of this around the edge of that base and then push it up to one side of the rim and once it's dry we'll have a quick look you can see that it's very weak there's no, no stability, no support on that left side so over here we need to fill that up with some milliput uh, and once that milliput dries, it's going to dry like rock and it's going to be the strongest base ever. It's not going to fall apart. So until then though, we need to be a bit careful with it. Don't bend it or anything like that because that, that base will just snap and fall out. So we're going to roll up some sausages of milliput and begin pressing it into the corners of this base. Using our sculpting tool, uh, a tool with a, a round head um, like a big ball bearing kind of thing uh, I'm just going to press that press that down all the way around the whole the whole circumference of the base and make sure we push it right into that gap so that it fills it fills in between the base and the rim fills those little gaps and if you hold the base down flat on the desk you can push it right in there and it will fill it all up now we're using our color shaper tool to smooth it and we've got a bit of water on there you can see how when you put a bit of water in it um, it just sort of melts it and becomes very smooth getting back to our ball bearing tool we want this to be smooth we don't want to have a sharp edge like a sharp corner where it goes from rim to the flat of the base because that will catch the light and we, when we when we fill this with resin later on we want this base to look like it's never ending we don't want it to look like it you know it's like a base with some walls we want it to look like a space so we want space to just look infinite 
so that's why we try and make those edges round. This is a sale from that same kit I mentioned earlier, the um, the Raider. I think it's called the Raider kit. It's the it's the flying pirate ship. I don't know what it is. Uh, this, this is a sale from that, and we want to use this to create a bit of context on our base. We want to make this look like it's a panel between two windows. Uh, so we're going to do pour pour a bunch of resin into this later on, and the resin is going to fill up the base, and this is going to be sitting on top of the resin, and it's going to look like just a divider between two windows, and it's just going to be a little bit of story, and it's going to tell us that this is a window inside a spaceship. Otherwise, if it wasn't there, it would just look like the Archon's going to be standing on some kind of invisible floor in space, so we wouldn't really know what's going on. But anyway, that's, that's about it for the converting of this model. Make sure you check out the video on how to paint this Archon um, and watch him really come to life. He actually turns out pretty cool, I reckon. Until next time, happy painting, happy converting, and hooroo.